What's up guys, it's River, and today we're looking at my top five travel cameras. I picked five cameras that have solid image quality, great color reproduction, so your images look great right out of the camera with minimal editing, and of course, these cameras are small and compact and easy to travel with, so let's do a deep dive, figure out exactly what each camera does, exactly who they're for, and most importantly, are they right for you? Let's get into it. And I just quickly want to say, I have genuinely loved reading the comments you guys have left on the last few videos. They actually make my day, especially when I'm just working from home all day. So if you have any questions, concerns, life advice, leave it down below in the comments. Also, there's a link in the description for the best deals on these cameras. So let's get right into it. Camera number one. I thought it'd be fun to start this list with a camera that's super flashy and the most technically advanced on the list. It's kind of like the Iron Man of cameras, but without the personality issues. This camera has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor with 11 frames per second in photo mode with a very high raw buffer. It's pretty impressive. Plus it has 4K at both 30 frames per second and 24 frames per second and it does HD all the way up to 120 frames per second. That's pretty solid. And it does all of this at 100 megabits per second data rate. The video out of this camera is very solid, very sharp, tons of detail, but the cherry on top is the Venice color sign. These colors come from Sony's new cinema level professional camera that's I think $120,000. Either way, it's pro level. And if you didn't understand that, it's basically nerd for great dynamic range, beautiful colors, beautiful skin tones, buy this camera. And the autofocus in this camera is magnificent. It's AI based, so it automatically tracks faces, eyes, objects for you. You can kind of just set it and forget it. And to be honest, I have very little to say in terms of autofocus about this camera because there's nothing to complain about. It is literally the perfect autofocus system. Autofocus for photos is generally great across the industry, but I think this is the best video autofocus in the industry right now. If you're a filmmaker or travel documentary person or someone that's just going on vacation and you want to make a lot of videos, the autofocus system in this camera is mind blowing. It is so good. Lastly, design. The design of this camera is really sleek, it's minimal and it's beautiful, and it's really just made to get the job done. The design of this camera is more for utility than for anything pretty. But the ergonomics overall are great. It has tons of buttons and the buttons are all just in the right place. But what I really appreciate about this camera is the customizability. You can program any shortcuts you want. You can really fine tune and change around the buttons for your specific needs. And the big plus of this camera is the flip up selfie screen. Now the reason I put this camera there is because it's technically advanced, but it's got that selfie flip up screen for vacation selfies, for vlogging, for just being able to see yourself. It's a really useful feature. The only major flaw that I see with this camera is that when you put a shotgun mic on this camera, it actually blocks the flip up screen. But that's a flaw that I'm easily able to forget because a lot of manufacturers make that mistake. But it's a tiny thing to overlook because you can easily buy a $10 adapter to put the mic on the side of your camera and not block your flip up screen. And another thing, the battery in this camera is not the greatest. It only lasts 40 minutes to an hour. It's just very typical for Sony, but you can easily buy a two pack with a charger for about 30 bucks on Amazon. Personally, the battery and the flip up screen placement don't really bother me, but I guess this is this camera's version of personality issues. Next up, we have the Fuji X-T3. Fuji cameras are like that weird luxury sports car you've never heard of, but then you try it out and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Personally, I don't think Fuji gets the credit that they deserve, but honestly, in terms of image quality and color reproduction, Fuji as a brand is the most interesting company on the market right now. This camera has a 26 megapixel sensor and does 11 frames per second in photo with a very high raw buffer, super on par with the Sony cameras. But here's where it dominates. For video, it does 4K up to 60 frames per second and HD up to 120. And all of that at 200 megabit data rate. Basically, it's double what Sony offers. The image out of this camera is absolutely magnificent. Fuji was the company that initially made 35 millimeter film for Hollywood movies. Decades later, they've taken the technology from 35 millimeter celluloid film, brought those colors over into a digital camera. So you have built in color profiles that emulate Fuji film. And by using those film emulations, you get such an interesting and vivid look right in camera. And personally, I feel like except for a minor tweak here and there, you really don't need to edit your images and videos out of this camera. Everything just looks like perfection. And also this camera's F-Log and Eterna, which are two profiles specifically for professional use. So if you're a professional cinematographer or videographer, you can make amazing images with this camera. You have so much horsepower. But here's where the camera disappoints. The images out of this camera are top-notch, but the autofocus is pretty mediocre. 
For photos, it's very fast, it's very reliable, but pretty much every camera today is. For video is kind of where it falls apart. It doesn't track subjects well, you can see it hunting, and it's always just kind of like struggling to keep up for video. Personally, if I use this camera for video, I will pull my own focus. I don't really think the video focus is worth using. Personally, I think the autofocus in this camera for video is passable for casual use, but I would never use it for anything professional or serious. It's just not that great. The design of this camera is inspired by 40s and 50s vintage film cameras. So it has a separate dial for shutter, aperture, ISO. It's very, very vintage. Despite it being inspired by vintage design, the camera still has very modern ergonomics. It has touchscreen, it has buttons just in the right place, and it still has the familiar buttons that you're used to seeing on modern cameras. Personally, this is my favorite camera in terms of design. It's like working with a functional piece of art. However, the menu system in this camera is kind of confusing and it takes a few days to figure it all out. But to be honest, I'm willing to forgive any flaw this camera has simply because of the image quality. The battery in this camera is just okay. I really do recommend having a spare just in case. Overall, this is a wonderful camera with great image and great design, but if it's a little too expensive, this camera does have a little brother known as the X-T30. You're not really missing much. You're still getting the same great image quality, just a little less horsepower. The next camera on the list is the Canon M50. In my opinion, it's the most affordable and user-friendly travel camera on the market today. It has a very strong image and great user-friendly design. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. In photos, it does 10 frames per second, and for video, it does 4K at 24 and 30, and HD at 24 all the way up to 60. It does do 120 frames per second, but only in 720p. The camera has excellent image quality and great color reproduction. Canon cameras generally have the most popular color science in the market. However, the 4K in this camera is a bit soft. When you go into 4K mode, it does a 1.6 times crop on the sensor. So when you're cropping into the sensor, you're throwing away like half of your megapixels and it just tends to come off a little soft and brittle. If you want the 4K for casual use or vlogging, you will be just fine. But if you're a professional, this 4K is definitely not good enough. It's cute, but it's not ready for professional use. The real reason I think most people would want this camera is for the photos and HD video. The colors in this camera are absolutely fantastic. They give you really good skin tones and I find everybody tends to look way more attractive on this camera than they do in real life, including me. I'm ugly as hell, but if you shoot me on a Canon camera, I'm actually kind of dateable. The design on this camera is absolutely fantastic. It is super user friendly. So if you're someone that's never really used cameras before or is just bad with technology, this camera is super easy to use. It's just pick up and go. I never really feel like I have questions when I'm using a Canon camera. And one thing that you'll notice about this camera right away is that it has this beautiful matte finish. All the buttons have this awesome sandpaper texture into them. It kind of feels like a really fancy Apple product. And one key thing about this camera is that it has a side flip screen that makes it really easy to vlog and take selfies with. This camera does have an external mic input with very solid audio quality. Two big design flaws with this camera is that when you plug an external mic in, the wire from the external mic tends to hit the flip up screen. And second, there's no way to monitor your audio while recording. Those are major design flaws, but the automatic leveler for audio is pretty good in this camera and you just have to be careful not to hit the mic jack with your flip up screen. The battery in this camera is kind of just okay. I always recommend having a spare. And if you're a professional content creator or vlogger, like you're rolling out with four or five anyway, so you should be fine. Overall, it's a really solid camera internally and I think most people will get this as their first camera because it's so affordable. If you're a content creator, you'll still get a beautiful image. You just have to work your way around the design flaws. But if you wanted a camera similar to the Canon M50 without the design flaws, the next camera is definitely for you. It's the Canon 90D. It's kind of like the hotter older brother of the M50. By the way, are you someone that wants to keep their camera safe while traveling? If so, this next bag might be perfect for you. Today's sponsor, the Everyday Camera Bag. The camera bag that's designed for everyday life while also keeping your camera safe and secure. They sent me some of their bags. I personally loved having something I could carry my everyday things in without needing two bags. The best part is they combine the camera compartment with a water resistant design to make sure that my camera's always safe and secure. Plus, it's stylish enough for everyday use. It looks pretty awesome and I love having it with me. It's affordable quality that will last and it's something that any photographer or YouTuber would love to have. The camera bag that's more than just a camera bag. For a limited time, if you use the code word RIVER, you'll get 10% off, but only for a limited time. So check out the link down below for your bag. The Canon 90D is a surprisingly good photo and video camera at this price point. It's made specifically with professionals in mind and enthusiasts. It has a 32 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is really high resolution for this sensor size. It shoots 11 frames per second in continuous autofocus for photos and does HD video up to 120 frames per second. 
and thankfully it does 4K without any crop in both 30 and 24 frames per second. This is actually Canon's first camera to do 4K without a crop. It's definitely not ready for professional use, but if you're a casual user, you will love the 4K out of this camera. And if you want a Canon camera that does 4K at a professional level, you really have to get a cinema camera. The images out of this camera are very strong. The color reproduction for Canon is mwah. It's an absolute work of art. The skin tones look amazing. The color reproduction is amazing. Everything out of this camera just looks better than real life. And as I mentioned before, Canon colors are generally regarded as the most popular color signs because they make people look so good. And the autofocus in this camera is really good. It has an 87% coverage on the sensor, so pretty much everything the camera will get in focus. It's very fast, very reliable. If you're a casual user, you won't really even notice the difference between this and Sony. If you're a pro user, it's pretty close to Sony's autofocus. If Sony's a 10, this is an eight. The one thing this camera does really well is track faces. And if the person's face ever turns away, it can intelligently track them in object mode. The design of this camera is specifically made with professionals in mind. It has an LCD screen on top to show you all your major settings, which makes it way easier to work with. Plus, the mic jack does not hit the LCD screen at all. The design itself is super solid and this camera is built like a tank. This camera is kind of like the Keanu Reeves of camera. You can really put it through anything and it just keeps on going and going. If you love Keanu Reeves as much as I do, leave a like. And just like Keanu Reeves, the battery in this camera keeps going and going. The battery in this camera will easily last you five or six hours on a single charge. I actually have nothing bad to say about this camera. This is actually my favorite workhorse of a camera, except for maybe the 4K. And if you do like this camera but can't quite afford it, you can always pick up the older model, the Canon 80D. You're really not losing much, except for maybe the 4K and the 120 frames per second, but you get the same image quality in the same design. And last but not least, we have the DJI Pocket Osmo. It's not like the other cameras on this list, and it's actually, I think in my opinion, the most interesting camera on this list. This camera is actually a small cell phone size sensor on a mini gimbal. And the gimbal is the most interesting part about this camera. The gimbal allows you to get perfectly smooth motion, get really weird and creative angles. It's kind of just like a creator's dream. And the image quality from this is strong enough to use this as a B camera with a professional DSLR. This camera has a 12 megapixel sensor, but it does photos at seven frames per second and 4K and HD at both 60 frames per second. And it has a special slow motion mode where it does 120 frames per second in HD. And you get all of that for 399, which is really impressive. And if you're a professional, you could easily use this to shoot weddings, corporate work, real estate, travel stuff. This is a really solid image. And the autofocus in this camera is more than good enough for casual use, but if you're a professional, it's about as good as your cell phone, but cell phone autofocus is pretty good lately. The design itself is ultra compact and takes up even less room than your cell phone. It's kind of like the perfect travel design. Plus, it comes with an authentic fake leather case made from real plastic cows. If you got that joke, leave a like. This camera is an absolute oddball, but I think it's really nifty simply because of the gimbal. You get such smooth and interesting footage with this camera. So I wanted to throw it on the list for fun and maybe introduce a few new people to gimbals. Also gimbal, that's such a weird name for it. It just makes it sound so silly, but gimbals themselves are actually really cool. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking our top five travel camera video. If you have any questions about these cameras whatsoever, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. Also, while you're down there, there's a link to all the best deals for the cameras we discussed today. So if you want the best pricing, be sure to check that out. And as always, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me figure out what kind of content you guys like and what kind of content I should make going forward. Until next time, guys. Mm -hmm.